Go on. Mom! Cien? Mom! Cien? Mom! Oh, my child. Mom. Here. Let me have a look at you. You finally made it through the tough times. Let's go home. Mom, let's go home. Okay, let's go home. Mom? Mom? Chin Chin. Mom, I finally brought you back with all my hoping. <laughs> Mom, are you okay? <laughs> These few years with you in prison, I was constantly hoping you'd come back soon. <laughs> Mom, I never imagined it would be seven years. <laughs> Mom, it's great you're back. Have a seat, Mom. <laughs> Sister Dong. Cheng Wang, you're here. Good to see you. Thank God you're uh -huh. back. <laughs> Cheng Wang, good to Hi. see you. How are you? Hello. Mm -hmm. Come inside. Mm -hmm. I'll go pick some vegetables for you. <laughs> okay. Come on, let's go inside. All right. Have a seat. Thank you. Please sit. Sister Dong, I'm so glad you're back. Our brothers and sisters have been praying for you since you were arrested for spreading the gospel. Mm -hmm. They've been praying for your early release. Thank the Lord. It was the care and protection of the Lord that kept me alive in there. Thank God. I know you've also had some tough times here. How is the church doing? Are our brothers and sisters doing well there? The church has become more and more desolate. Everyone has been very negative. Almost nobody comes to the meetings. The church has become bleak and lifeless. When the pastors and elders preach, they still talk about the same things from the Bible and theology. There's no new enlightenment. And everyone's sick of hearing it. True. There's no life supply in these gatherings anymore. And no enjoyment either. Some people don't even come anymore. Yes. There isn't any work of the Holy Spirit. Since the church is so desolate, we should go find a church that has the work of the Holy Spirit and follow God's footsteps. We can't just do nothing. You're absolutely right. I've actually been looking around and I found a book. I learned a lot from it. It really opened my eyes. I think what's in it is the truth, a message from the Holy Spirit. I really gained from it. I'd like you to read it as well. We'd love to. <laughs> Though many people believe in God, few understand what faith in God really means and what they must do to be after the heart of God. This is because Though people are familiar with the word God and phrases such as the work of God, they do not actually know God, much less do they know His work. No wonder, then, that all those who do not know God are possessed of a muddled belief. People do not take belief in God seriously because believing in God is too unfamiliar, too strange for them. In this way, they fall short of the demands of God. 
In other words, if people do not know God, do not know His work, then they are not fit for God's use. Much less can they fulfill the desire of God. Belief in God means believing there is a God. This is the simplest concept of faith in God. What is more, believing that there is a God is not the same as truly believing in God. Rather, it is merely a kind of simple faith with strong religious overtones. True faith in God means experiencing the words and work of God based on a belief that God holds sovereignty over all things. So you shall be freed of your corrupt disposition, shall fulfill the desire of God, and shall come to know God. Only through such a journey can you be said to believe in God. Yet people often see belief in God as something very simple and frivolous. The belief of such people is meaningless and shall never gain the approval of God because they tread the wrong path. Today, there are still those who believe in God in letters, in hollow doctrines. They are unaware that their belief in God has no substance and that they are unable to gain the approval of God. And yet, they still pray for peace and sufficient grace from God. We should stop and ask ourselves, could believing in God really be the easiest thing on earth? Does believing in God mean nothing more than receiving much grace from God? Can people who believe in God but do not know Him and believe in God yet oppose Him really fulfill the desire of God? Wow. This is wonderful. This explains what believing in God is. It has new light, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. It does. We've never heard anything like this. Mm -hmm. Should we continue reading? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sister Dong, your turn. Okay. My deeds are greater in number than the grains of sand on the beaches, and my wisdom greater than that of all those sons of Solomon. Yet men merely think of me as a physician of little account and an unknown teacher of man. How many believe in me just so I would heal their own sickness. How many believe in me only so I would use my powers to drive unclean spirits out of their bodies? And how many believe in me simply for the purpose of receiving peace and joy? How many believe in me only to demand from me more material wealth? And how many believe in me just to spend this life in safety and to be safe and sound in the world to come? How many believe in me only to avoid the suffering of hell and to receive the blessings of heaven? How many believe in me only for temporary comfort but do not seek to gain anything in the world to come? When I brought down my fury upon mankind and seized all the joy and peace he originally possessed, man became doubtful. When I gave unto man the suffering of hell and reclaimed the blessings of heaven, man's shame transformed into anger. Hmm. When man asked me to heal him, yet I acknowledged him not, and felt abhorrence for him. Man went far away from me and sought the way of witch doctors and sorcery. When I took away all that man had demanded from me, then all disappeared without a trace. Therefore, I say that man has faith in me because I give too much grace, and there is far too much to gain from me. The Jews believed in me for my grace and followed me wherever I went. 
These ignorant men of limited knowledge and experience only sought to see the signs and wonders I manifested. They regarded me as the head of the house of the Jews who could perform the greatest miracles. Therefore, when I exercised demons from men, they talked amongst themselves in great confusion, saying that I am Elijah, that I am Moses, that I am the most ancient of all the prophets, that I am the greatest of all physicians. Apart from myself saying that I am the life, that I am the way and the truth, none could know my being or my identity. Apart from myself saying that heaven is the place where my father lives, none knew that I am the son of God and God himself. Apart from myself saying that I shall bring redemption to all mankind and ransom mankind, no one knew that I am the redeemer of mankind. Men only knew me as a benevolent and a compassionate human being. And apart from myself being able to explain all there is of me, no one actually knew me, and none believed that I am the son of the living God. Man only has such manner of faith in me and fools me in this way. How can man bear me witness when he holds such views of me? Wow. It sounds to me like God is speaking directly to us. Mm -hmm. The tone is just like God himself is talking to us. It seems to be God's voice. No man could come up with these words. Does this mean that we are actually hearing the voice of God? <sighs> it's great that you feel this way. What did the Lord Jesus say? My sheep hear my voice. Don't you hear God's voice in this book? Thank the Lord. God has truly blessed us, allowing us to listen to his voice. Yeah, it's true. There's truth in these words right here. And it's all about how we should know the Lord Jesus. These words are very precious. They enlighten and guide us knowing God. Mm -hmm. That's great. You also think these words are precious. That's wonderful. I've been reading this book for over a year. And it reveals many mysteries that the Bible never did. It brings truth for those who believe in God. It puts to rest a lot of uncertainties and confusion. The more I read it, the brighter my heart gets. After reading this, you can understand many truths clearly. Reading this book is God's blessing to us. <gasps> Thank the Lord. Wow, this book is so precious. <laughs> hey, Sheng Wang. Yes. Who wrote this book? Where did it come from? Yeah. <sighs> can you tell us about it? Uh, a friend who preaches the gospel gave it to me. <gasps> Could you leave the book here for us so we can give it a good read? <laughs> of course. Since you're so interested, I'll leave it here for you guys. If you read it enough, you'll gradually understand where these words came from. Thanks be to the Lord. I've also brought some videos. Do you want to watch them? Uh, okay. Oh, isn't this book great? Let's read some more. God's 6,000 year management plan is coming to an end and the gate of the kingdom has been opened to all those who seek the appearance of God. Dear brothers and sisters, what are you waiting for? What is it that you seek? Do you await the appearance of God? Are you searching for the footprints of God? How the appearance of God is yearned for and how difficult it is to find God's footprints. In an age such as this, in a world such as this, what must we do to witness the day of God's appearance? What must we do to follow the footprints of God? 
Such questions are faced by all those who await the appearance of God. You have all considered them on more than one occasion. But with what outcome? Where does God appear? Where are the footprints of God? Have you gained the answers? Many people's reply would be as follows. God appears among those who follow him and his footprints are among us. It's that simple. Anyone can provide a formulaic answer. But do you understand what the appearance of God is and what the footprints of God are? The appearance of God refers to his personal arrival on earth to do his work. With his own identity and disposition and in his inherent method, he descends among man to conduct the work of initiating an age and ending an age. This kind of appearance is not a form of ceremony. It is not a sign. Nor is it a picture, nor is it a miracle. It is not a grand vision, and it is especially not a religious process. It is a real and actual fact that can be touched and be held. This kind of appearance is not for the sake of following a process or for the sake of a short-term undertaking. It is rather for the sake of a stage of work in his management plan. The appearance of God is always meaningful and is always connected to his management plan. This appearance is completely different from the appearance of God's guidance, leadership, and enlightenment of mankind. God carries out a stage of great work each time he reveals himself. This work is different from that of any other age. It is unimaginable to man and has never been experienced by mankind. It is a work that starts a new age and concludes the old age. And it is a new and improved form of work for the salvation of mankind. It is the work of bringing mankind into the new age. And that is the significance of the appearance of God. Hmm. This is really profound. An average person couldn't write this. Hmm. These words are wonderful. Let's read some more. Mm -hmm. Dad, Mom, why don't we watch a video? Okay. <laughs> Since we are searching for the footprints of God, we must search for God's will, for the words of God, for the utterances of God. For where there are the new words of God, there is the voice of God. And where there are the footsteps of God, there are the deeds of God. Where there is the expression of God, there is the appearance of God. And where there is the appearance of God, there exists the truth, the way, and the life. While seeking the footprints of God, you ignored the words that God is the truth, the way, and the life. So when many people receive the truth, they do not believe that they have found the footprints of God, and much less acknowledge the appearance of God. What a serious error that is. The appearance of God cannot be reconciled with the conceptions of man, much less can God appear at the behest of man. God makes his own choices and has his own plans when he does his work. Moreover, he has his own objectives and his own methods. 
it is not necessary for him to discuss the work he does with man or to seek the advice of man, much less notify each and every person of his work. This is the disposition of God and, moreover, should be recognized by everyone. If you desire to witness the appearance of God, if you wish to follow the footprints of God, then you must first transcend your own conceptions. You must not demand that God do this or that, much less should you place Him within your own confines and limit Him to your own conceptions. Instead, you should ask how you should seek the footprints of God, how you should accept the appearance of God, and how you should submit to the new work of God. That is what should be done by man. Since man is not the truth and is not possessed of the truth, man should seek, accept, and obey. Wow, that is so well put. How to see God's appearance is described so clearly. These words are the revelation of the Holy Spirit. They couldn't be human words. Mm -hmm. We were waiting for the Lord before, but only looked up to pastors and religious leaders. And we overlooked the true word of the Holy Spirit. We're so foolish and ignorant. Mm-hmm. Absolutely right. I can see this is the word of the Holy Spirit. Mm. It reveals many mysteries that people can't imagine. Yes, it does. This is such a valuable book. It is. Hey, Sien, you read now. I was once known as Jehovah. I was also once known as the Messiah. And people once called me Jesus the Savior because they loved and respected me. But today, I am not the Jehovah or Jesus that people knew in times past. I am the God who has returned in the last days, the God who shall bring the age to an end. I am the God himself that rises up at the ends of the earth replete with my entire disposition and full of authority, honor, and glory. People have never engaged with me, have never known me, and have always been ignorant of my disposition. From the creation of the world until today, not one person has seen me. This is the God who appears to man during the last days, but is hidden among man. True and real, he resides among man. Like the burning sun and the flaming fire, filled with power and brimming with authority, there is not a single person or thing that shall not be judged by my words, and not a single person or thing that shall not be purified through the burning of fire. Eventually, all nations shall be blessed because of my words and also smashed to pieces because of these same words. In this way, all people during the last days shall see that I am the Savior returned. I am the Almighty God that conquers all of mankind. And I was once the sin offering for man. But in the last days, I also become the flames of the sun that burn all things, as well as the sun of righteousness that reveals all things. Such is my work of the last days. I have taken on this name and am possessed of this disposition so that all people may see that I am a righteous God and I'm the burning sun, and I'm also the flaming fire. It is so that all people may worship me, 
the only true God, and so that they may see my true face. I am not only the God of the Israelites, and I'm not just the Redeemer. I am the God of all creatures throughout heavens and earth and seas. Hmm. This is so powerful and authoritative. Mm -hmm. Hey, Jing Jing, isn't this the voice of God? Mm, I think so. The words are so powerful. They bear witness to Almighty God. Mm -hmm. These last few years, Eastern Lightning said the Lord has returned, that He is Almighty God in the flesh. He is speaking the truth and doing the judgment. Hey, do you think that the word appears in the flesh happens to be an Eastern Lightning book? Are these the words of Almighty God? They are. This passage clearly bears witness that Almighty God is the return of the Lord Jesus. Mm. Oh, the pastors and elders have condemned Eastern Lightning. Isn't it because they have been preaching the return of the Lord Jesus, that He is Almighty God? Probably. If that's really the case, then we must give it some investigation. Is Almighty God actually the return of the Lord Jesus? Is He the appearance of the Lord Jesus? Hmm. Yes, you are right. The leaders of the religious world are condemning Eastern Lightning because of this for sure. We have to look into this matter. Right. Let's see if the words in this book really are the words of the Lord, if they really are His voice. The passages we've read so far are wonderful. I think they are the truth. Yes. However, the Bible prophesied the Lord would descend on a cloud in His return. But Eastern Lightning bears witness that God incarnate has come and is working. This is something we're not too clear on. Maybe we should wait for Cheng Wang to come here so we can ask her. Okay. God bless. Sister Dong, have you been reading this book for the past few days? Yes. <laughs> Cheng Wang. Yes. Isn't the word appears in the flesh a book that came from Eastern Lightning? Yes, it is. Have you already accepted Eastern Lightning then? <laughs> You're correct. I accepted Almighty God over a year ago. I only stayed in our old church because there are still some people who truly believe in God who I'd like to share the gospel with. I plan to share the gospel with them and then leave our church. A few days ago, I read some words from this book for Sister Zhang, Sister Yang, and Brother Zhao. They concluded that the words of Almighty God are really the voice of God. That's right. right. Well, I'm so moved. Now that you're back home, this is my gift to you. I want you to be able to read the words of Almighty God and hear the voice of God. How do you feel after reading a bit of this book? Wonderful. We are so blessed. The words in this book are wonderful. It's something we can't read or hear in religion. <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> Thank the Lord. We really feel that these words are the truth and they seem to come from the Holy Spirit. Thank God. However, there's something we're not very clear on. Oh, what is it? It's prophesied in the Bible that the Lord would descend on a cloud in His return. But Eastern Lightning tells that God incarnate has appeared and is in fact working. Well, we can't really figure this out. Please share with us what you know. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sister Dong, most people believe that when the Lord returns, he will descend on a cloud, which seems to be in line with the prophecy in the Bible. But the Lord Jesus said many things when prophesying his return. What we know is just one of those things, but it's not in line with his will. Just like you, I used to believe that when the Lord Jesus returned, he would descend on a cloud. <laughs> but then... I finally understood with help from followers of the Church of Almighty God. There's not only one prophecy of His return this way, but one about Him becoming flesh and coming secretly. Just as the Lord Jesus said, 
But know this, that if the manager of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would have not suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore, be you also ready. For in such an hour as you think not, the Son of Man comes. And also, and at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom comes, go you out to meet him. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him, and will sup with him and he with me. Amen. Saying come as a thief means that the Lord will quietly come to steal treasures, and not everyone will know or be able to see it. Only those wise virgins who hear the voice of the Lord and open the door will be able to welcome him, be risen up before God's throne, and attend the feast of the Lamb. There's also this prophecy from Lord Jesus about his return. For as the lightning that lightens out of one part under heaven shines to the other part under heaven, so shall also the Son of Man be in his day. But first must he suffer many things and be rejected of this generation. When the Son of Man is mentioned, it is referring to God incarnate. Just like Lord Jesus, this is God in the flesh. From the outside, he looked just like a regular person. So it wasn't until the Lord Jesus spoke and performed work that some people realized that he was Christ. Oh, yes. So if the Lord came in his resurrected spiritual body, coming on a cloud like that, then everyone would be able to see him and they would fall to the ground scared and shaking. Then who would dare to reject the Lord? Nobody. Hmm. Yes. So the Lord Jesus said, But first must he suffer many things and be rejected of this generation. How then could this be fulfilled? <sighs> it's true. It is only God incarnate as the Son of Man who will through work endure hardship and be rejected by this generation. Just like when the Lord Jesus appeared and worked, the scribes, chief priests, and Pharisees would not acknowledge that he was God in the flesh. They resisted and condemned him, and they even nailed him to the cross, as you know. Are we all clear on this? Yes. Mm -hmm. I think wow, so. this prophecy of the Lord is very clear. He will descend as the Son of Man, suffer many things, and be rejected by this generation. This refers to God incarnate, don't you guys think? Yes, yes. yes. it does. Definitely. <laughs> We've read this prophecy from the Lord Jesus many mm -hmm. times, but we hadn't seen this new side of it yet. That's true. That's true. Yes. God's prophecies are mysteries, and humans cannot understand them. If not for the appearance of Almighty God, we would never be able to understand the prophecies of Lord Jesus. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I've read these Bible passages in the past, quite a few times, actually. But it was like this was the first time. <laughs> After this meeting today, I feel like my heart has finally <laughs> awakened. It's <laughs> amazing, isn't it? Don't you think these prophecies have been fulfilled? Yes. yes. The return of the Lord is becoming flesh and appearing to mankind. It yes. is. That's true. Sister, you are so right. The Lord Jesus has returned, and he is Almighty God in the flesh. <laughs> true. This book you've been reading, the word appears in the flesh, is the word of Almighty God. This is the Creed of Eastern Lightning and the Bible of the Age of Kingdom. Wow, that's amazing. <laughs> Once you've read the words in this book, you'll know it's the truth and the voice of God. This is true. Many people of different denominations have heard that Almighty God's words are the truth, that it's the voice of God and accepted Almighty God attending the Lamb's Feast. That's wonderful. It is. Almighty God speaks the truth and does the work of judgment to cleanse and save mankind in the last days. And then he'll lead us into a beautiful destination that is lead us into the kingdom of Christ. <laughs> God be praised. Those who accept the work of Almighty God in the last days are called wise virgins, raised up before disaster. These people will be perfected by God and become overcomers before disaster, becoming the people of God's kingdom. Thanks be to God. Once God has made a group of overcomers, he will send down the catastrophe and begin rewarding good and punishing evil. After the catastrophe, he will descend on a cloud and openly appear to everyone. Then the prophecy from the book of Revelation. Behold, he comes with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. These words will have been fulfilled. 
Huh? Wow, so that's what those words mean. If those who are only waiting for the Lord to descend on a cloud do not accept the work of Almighty God and still resist the work of Christ in the last days, they can only fall into disaster crying and regretting it. Just as Almighty God says, When you see Jesus descend from the heaven upon a white cloud with your own eyes, this will be the public appearance of the Son of Righteousness. Perhaps that will be a time of great excitement for you. Yet you should know that the time when you witness Jesus descend from the heavens is also the same time when you go down to hell to be punished. It will herald the end of God's management plan and it will be when God rewards the good and punishes the wicked. For the judgment of God will have ended before man sees signs when there is only the expression of truth. Those who accept the truth and do not seek signs and thus have been purified shall have returned before the throne of God and entered the Creator's embrace. Only those who persist in the belief that the Jesus who does not write upon a white cloud is a false Christ shall be subjected to everlasting punishment. For they only believe in the Jesus who exhibits signs, but do not acknowledge the Jesus who proclaims severe judgment and releases the true way of life. And so it can only be that Jesus deals with them when he openly returns upon a white cloud. Ah, uh, I think I get it now. So the prophecy of the Lord's return will be fulfilled that way. Mm -hmm. Ah, before, we just blindly believed what the pastor said, that the Lord would descend on a cloud when he returned. Yeah. We simply just looked to the sky, stupidly waiting for the Lord, thinking that we could enter the kingdom of heaven that way. We ignored the prophecies of his secret coming. Thinking back, we used to read the prophecies all the time. So how did we not understand it? Yes, That's indeed. Right. Our pastors and elders never clearly explained the Bible to us. Mm -hmm. They just had us memorize the words in it. And this has seriously misled us. No one taught us right. <laughs> really has. If you hadn't given us this book to read, we would have missed the opportunity of welcoming the Lord. <laughs> Thanks be to God. We nearly became the foolish virgins that the Lord will eliminate. Yes. Oh, that'd be terrible. Mm. Wow. The Lord has not abandoned us. He has graced us. Yeah. Hey, we turned out to be pretty lucky. <laughs> <laughs> we are certainly yeah, fortunate. I know. Xing Huang, how come you've just given this book to us? It's thanks to the Lord. <laughs> yes. Yeah. This is all the will and planning of the Lord. It is. It's true. We've read this book, heard the voice of the Lord, and welcomed him. Yes. He yes. has such great love for us. <laughs> yes. That's true. Thank the Lord. Yes. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank God. Everyone who hears his voice is truly blessed. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Let's have some tea. Okay. This is really great. <sighs> My heart We're so blessed, aren't we? What do you think Should about everything? Really yeah. 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 This was yeah. wonderful. Yeah. Isn't this yeah. great? There. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Tenguan, you accepted Almighty God over mm -hmm. a year ago, so you understand more of the truth than we do. Oh, yes. Can you tell us how you determined that Almighty God is the return of the Lord Jesus? That's yeah. right. Tell us. Yeah, tell us. <laughs> yeah, mm. tell us. <laughs> okay. <sighs> After our church started to get empty, I didn't like the gatherings. I kept praying to the Lord about understanding what happened and why we were lacking the work of the Holy Spirit. Just when I was at the end of my rope, I went to a friend's house. She told me Almighty God's work in the last days and gave me a copy of The Word Appears in the Flesh, which are the words of Almighty God. When I read these words, I found that they were all the truth and that it was the voice of God. Aside from God, who else can express the truth? Nobody can express that truth. Mm. It's true. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. Almighty God speaks the truths that can purify and save mankind, revealing the mysteries of his management plan to save man and explaining the purpose of God's three stages of work, the mysteries of his incarnation, the inside story and the essence of the Bible, how Satan corrupts mankind, how God saves mankind. 
The final destination of every type of person, how people should seek in order to gain salvation and enter God's kingdom. These truths are clearly stated. Reading the words of Almighty God, I understood a lot of things that I couldn't get from the Bible. This settled my misconceptions about God and also showed me the path I should take in my faith. I received life supply, no more darkness in my life, and I regained the work of the Holy Spirit. I finally feel so happy. I found the spring of living water. Thanks be to God. Which reminds me of the words of the Lord Jesus. I have yet many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. However, when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. Amen. Hmm. The words expressed by Almighty God fulfill the prophecies of the Lord, which is why I'm certain that he has returned. He is Almighty God in the flesh, and why I accepted Almighty God. Thank the Thanks Lord. Be to God. Sister Dong, Brother Liu, once you've read more of Almighty God's words, you will also know in your hearts that the Lord Jesus we longed for all these years has returned. Thanks be to the Lord. Thanks be to the Lord. Then we must read more of Almighty God's words. Yes, yes. indeed. So, how about we watch a video of the recitation of God's words? Great right? idea. <laughs> this is so uh. nice. Throughout the universe, I am doing my work. And in the east, thunderous crashes issue forth endlessly, shaking all denominations and sects. It is my voice that has led all men into the present. I shall cause all men to be conquered by my voice to fall into this stream and submit before me. For I have long since reclaimed my glory from all the earth and issued it forth anew in the east. Who would not long to see my glory? Who would not anxiously await my return? Who would not thirst for my reappearance? Who would not pine for my loveliness? Who would not come to the light? Who would not look upon the richness of Canaan? Who does not long for the return of the Redeemer? Who does not adore the Great Almighty? Amen. 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 My voice shall spread throughout the earth. I wish, facing my chosen people, to speak more words to them, like the mighty thunders that shake the mountains and rivers. I speak my words to the whole universe and to mankind. Hence the words in my mouth have become man's treasure and all men cherish my words. The lightning flashes from the east all the way to the west. My words are such that man is loath to give them up and finds them unfathomable, but rejoices in them all the more. Like an innocent newborn infant, all men are glad and joyful, celebrating the coming of my return. By means of my voice, I shall bring all of mankind before me. Amen. 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 Thanks be to God. Yeah. His words are so wonderful. Yeah. Thenceforth, I shall formally enter into the race of men so that they will come to worship me. With the glory that I radiate and the words in my mouth, I shall make it such that all men come before me. And see that the lightning flashes from the east, and that I have also descended onto the Mount of Olives of the east. They will see that I have already long been on earth. 
no longer as the son of Jews, but as the lightning of the East. Amen. For I have long since been resurrected and have departed from mankind's midst and then reappeared with glory among mankind. I am he who was worshiped countless ages before now. And I am also the infant forsaken by the Israelites countless ages before now. Moreover, I am the all-glorious, almighty God of the present age. Amen. 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 Thanks be to God. Let all come before my throne and see my glorious countenance. Hear my voice and look upon my deeds. Amen. This is the whole entirety of my will. It is the end and the climax of my great plan as well as the purpose of my management. Let every nation worship me, every tongue acknowledge me, every man repose his faith in me, and every people be subject unto me. Amen. Thank the Lord. This is wonderful. Do you see? Isn't this the appearance of the Lord? Only the Spirit of God could bear witness to His appearance. Thanks be to God. Uh, only the Holy Spirit could testify God's work. Only this is genuine. Yeah. Because it was prophesied in the Bible, but of that day and that hour knows no <laughs> man, no, not the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son, mm -hmm. but the Father. Amen. So, with this testimony from the Holy Spirit, and hearing the Spirit's words, haven't we seen the Lord's appearance? Yes. We have. We have. <laughs> you are absolutely yes. right. Almighty God utters all the truths to save men. And his words are the true light lighting up men in darkness. People of many denominations in China have joined. They all saw that Almighty God's words are the truth and the voice of God and decided to follow him. The words of Almighty God and the word appears in the flesh have been online for some time. And they are openly spread to all of mankind. They're on my ass. While it? expanding the gospel, even though the Church of Almighty God has suffered oppression by the CCP's government, as well as the resistance of Antichrist forces in the religious world, none of the forces of Satan can stop the expansion of the kingdom gospel of God. Amen. Amen. This is Amen. the authority and the might of God's word. Amen. Amen. Thank the to God. Lord. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Almighty God's words and work. Fulfill the prophecy of the Lord Jesus. For as the lightning comes out of the east and shines even to the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Lightning is a great light, and that refers to God's words. Comes out of the east means that it comes from China. And shines even to the west refers to reaching the west. The coming of the Son of Man refers to God becoming flesh and working in the east, China. And finally, the work expanded into the west, so this was finally fulfilled. Thanks be to God. Uh, that's amazing. I never imagined. Oh, wow. After this, I've only now understood that these words from the Lord are being fulfilled this way. That's yeah. exactly. true. I've honestly never even dreamed that the return of the Lord Jesus would be like this. No wonder, he said, my sheep hear my voice. Mm. We hear God's voice and seek the truth. As a result, we get to see his appearance and his work. <laughs> yes, thanks to God. The Lord appearing and working this way is very <laughs> wise and revealing. Yeah, it really is wise. You mentioning this makes me think of this passage. Ask and it shall be given you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened to you. Amen. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Amen. Amen. The Lord's words are so real. We prayed to the Lord, asking him, where will you appear? Huh. And now the Lord sent people to share the gospel with us. Yeah. Thanks be to the Lord. He truly has graced yeah. us. Uh -huh. God yes. has not abandoned us. That's true. It's a blessing. Thank God. Yeah. This is God's sheep hearing his voice. From almighty God's words, we can be sure that the Lord Jesus has already returned, that he is almighty God. We have welcomed the return of the Lord Jesus. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Thank so Amen. Much. Hey, do you want to listen to a song of God's yes. wisdom? Yes. <laughs> Sorry. 
Sien? Yeah? Go get the door. Okay. Come on, let's put the book away. Who is it? It's Liu Chenying. Sien. Oh, Director Liu. Is your mother home? Yeah, she's home. Chief Chen, Officer Li. Mom, Director Liu's here. Director Liu? Uh, there you are. Jingxing, this is Chief Chen and Officer Li. Hmm. Oh. Chief Chen, Officer Li, let's have a seat. <clears throat> Don't you think? You've been home for a few days now. Have you had any meetings? Has anyone been here to preach? Now that you're out of prison, do you still believe in God? You should learn something from this. You can't just go to prison without gaining anything. If you could just spend your days at home as you should, why would you want to go back to prison, huh? Don't think that. Just because you're out, you can't go back. From now on, you have to report to the police station once a month and give an account of what you've been doing. Maybe if you have attended any gatherings, if you've gone out to preach the gospel and who you've been in contact with, and if you know of anyone preaching the gospel, especially from Eastern Lightning, you absolutely must give us an honest report. I'm warning you, if you attend another gathering, we will catch you. And if that happens, it won't be only a few years this time. The next time, we will have to put you away for life. How are we clear on this? Well, I just wanted to let you know about the official ruling. This is for your own good. You should understand. Exactly. This is what's best for you. You should really cooperate. Sir, what laws are we actually breaking by believing in Jesus Christ? You imprisoned my mother for seven years without any legal basis. And now that she's out, you're still coming to our home to harass us, depriving my mom of her freedom. Can't you just let people live? Chief you... Chen. Grandma. Chief Chen. One, believing in God isn't breaking the law, and two, we're not involved in politics. So why are we being persecuted this way? Why aren't we given freedom of belief? It doesn't make any sense. By believing in God, we are taking the right path. So why don't you leave us alone? I've come out of prison, so why won't you let me be? We don't have any ill will toward you. So why do you hate those of us who believe in God? It Listen, listen. Chief Chen wants the best for you. Let it go. Chief Chen has something else to say. Let me tell you. We don't want to arrest or monitor you people either. It's the government and the regulations of our supervisors. We simply don't have a choice. You believers haven't done anything illegal or committed crimes, but you have gone against government policy. And the government hates those who believe in God. When they order us to arrest you, what other choice do we have? Don't blame us. Blame's useless. There's a saying, a wise man bows to fate. If it were up to me, you would just have to submissively follow all the rules and not believe in this anymore. You would just lead a normal life and the government would leave you alone. We just wouldn't have any further interest in you. Do you guys get it? Everything that I'm saying is for your own good. So my advice is, take good care of yourselves, okay?
the Chinese Communist government is backing us into a corner. Even after prison, they're still monitoring you and don't let you go out or attend gatherings. You'll have to report to them every month. It's as if you're under arrest, even if you're home. How can we have any freedom? Well, looks like their persecution of home churches is only getting worse. Particularly the Church of Almighty God. That's even more brutal, more unfair. If the government knew that we believe in Almighty God, they would certainly arrest us and put us away with a long <laughs> sentence. These last few days, I can't stop thinking that we've already accepted Eastern Lightning and the government will find out sooner or later. If they were to arrest me again, my life would be... I probably wouldn't come back. But I also think we've believed in the Lord for so long and we've been waiting for his return to enter the kingdom of heaven. And now that he's returned, if we don't accept him because we're cowards, then wouldn't all that suffering have been in vain? All those years for nothing. Jing Jing. Mom? Sit down. Jing Jing. Even if Eastern Lighting is right, we can't accept it. If you're arrested again, how could I go on living? <laughs> These seven years. You were in prison, you know how I got through it. I worried about you every day. I was afraid that something would happen while you were there and you wouldn't make it out alive. I nearly cried myself dry, Gingy. Mom. <laughs> Not to mention that. Because of your arrest. Sien was kicked out of school. And the government had people watching our house. We weren't free, even in our own home. Other people in the village still laugh at us. No one will even look at us. You've come back and it hasn't been easy. But you believe in Eastern Lightning. That means you will definitely be thrown into prison again. And who knows if you'll make it out alive this time. You are my only daughter, Qingxi. Who will take care of me in my old age? Mom. <sighs> 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 Jinxi, please listen to your mom's advice. Do not believe in Eastern Lightning, okay? Mom, in these last seven years, you've also suffered very much. The Lord Jesus said, Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. The Lord approves of our suffering, Mother. And while I was in prison, he has always protected me. I came out safe and sound, didn't I, Mom? 
These past days, we have sought truth and investigated and determined that Eastern Lightning is the Lord Jesus appearing and working. Mm -hmm. Our lifelong belief in the Lord has been to welcome his return, Mom. Now that he's back, if we don't accept him because of our fear of the CCP government's oppression, wouldn't we lose our opportunity to enter the kingdom of heaven? She's right, ma'am. Mom, Eastern Lightning is the true way. It's the work of the Lord Jesus. Mm -hmm. If we accept God in the last days, if we have him with us, with his care and protection, there's nothing we can't overcome. Mm -hmm. Goodbye, Pastor Xia, mm -hmm. Elder Shen. <laughs> Bye, Bye, take care. Hello, Brother Sun. Pastor Xia, I heard that Dong Jingjing is looking into Eastern Lightning. Go check it out as soon as you can. I've got it. Dong Xingxing just got out of prison. And she's looking into Eastern Lightning. What? Apparently, she hasn't had enough of prison. Eastern Lightning? Who told her about that? I'm not sure yet. <sighs> she was so well respected in the church. Everybody loved to hear her preach. If she's accepted Eastern Lightning, she will take many others with her. Won't her church just fall apart? No matter what it takes, we have to stop her. Eastern Lightning is stealing our sheep, and they haven't stopped. With Dong Xingxing accepting it as well, there are only a few good ones left in the church. True. We pastors are becoming generals without an army. Let's go. Let's hurry up and go see. Okay. Sister Dong, I'm not scolding you. You went to prison for the Lord. For seven years, you endured a lot for the Lord, never turned away. It's a great testimony. But I never could have imagined this. You just got out of prison. Why didn't you discuss your belief in Eastern Lightning with us? You know, this is a critical time for the return of the Lord. There are many false Christs around deceiving people. Yeah. You cannot choose the wrong path. That's true, sister. Otherwise, when the Lord comes and rejects you, all of your years of suffering will have been in vain, sister. That's right. Sister Dong, Pastor Jean, I really think it's a pity that you've decided to follow this Eastern Lightning. Church has been so empty, lacking the Holy Spirit's work. We wouldn't be against it if you went to a church with the Holy Spirit's work. But you can't believe in Eastern Lightning. Mm hmm Most of the pastors and elders of the religious world are against Eastern Lightning. How could it be the true way? Think about it. If Eastern Lightning were the true way, wouldn't we accept it too? Exactly. All of them know the Bible very well and serve the Lord. They understand a lot more than we do. Anything that they oppose can't be the true way. We have to believe what they say. And we must uphold the name of the Lord at all times and stick to his way. We can't believe in Eastern Lightning. Pastor Jia, Elder Shen, you say that anything that the leaders of the religious world oppose cannot be true. But does this really make sense? Are there words of the Lord to back this up? Based on your perspective, that anything they oppose can't be the true way, I'd like to ask you two, when the Lord Jesus appeared and began to work, who was it that resisted and condemned him? Who joined the Roman government to persecute and nail him to the cross? Wasn't it the chief priests, scribes, and Pharisees of the Jewish religion? They had all served God for many years and knew the scripture well, yet they resisted and condemned the Lord Jesus. Would you say that the Lord Jesus wasn't the true God and that his work wasn't the true way then? You say that Eastern Lightning isn't the true way. But have you even examined Eastern Lightning? 
Have you read the words of Almighty God? You have neither read the words from the book nor thoroughly looked into Eastern Lightning, but you resist it nonetheless. Aren't you afraid of making the same mistake the Pharisees made back then? Sister Dong, how could you say that? Your judgment of this isn't based on whether it has the work of the Holy Spirit and whether it has the truth. It's based on whether religious leaders happen to oppose it or not. Is judging it this way in sync with God's will or with the truth? Recently, we've read many of Almighty God's words, and we've discovered that they are all the truth, authoritative and powerful. It is the voice of God. Other than God, who would express that? Who would express His voice? So we have determined that Almighty God is God in the flesh and that Eastern Lightning is the true way. Yes. Pastor Jia, Elder Shen, you have served the Lord for many years. You should hear the Lord's voice based on His own words. Don't just blindly condemn Eastern Lightning. You are actually resisting God. That's right. Please read the words of Almighty God. The Lord Jesus said, that God's sheep listen to His voice. And if you read the words of Almighty God, you would certainly be able to hear that it is His voice. You want me to read Almighty God's words and hear God's voice? No way. Why would I do that? Where is God's voice, really? The words of the Bible are all His voice. And aside from the Bible, nothing else is. How could it be you don't know that? Jesus prophesied His return, and that was the voice of God. He had us listen to the Lord's voice from the Bible. If you're not seeking to hear his voice from the Bible, it doesn't count. Amen. Amen. Tell me, how could you not see this? Pastor Jaw is right. God's words are all in the Bible. So how could there be any of his words out of the Bible? Amen. You're searching for God's voice out of the Bible. Isn't that departing from the Lord's way? Exactly. To believe in the Lord, we must follow the Bible at all times. And departing from it is just heresy. Sister, you should be clear on this. Pastor Jha, Elder Shen, you say that the Lord's words are all in the Bible, and that's the only place to find them. Are those really the facts? Has the Lord said that all of his words are in the Bible? Has the Lord said that anything out of it is heresy? Has he ever said that everything in the Bible is his voice? As a pastor and an elder, you should both know that Jesus had worked and preached for three and a half years, so he must have said many things. Could he really only have said those things that were recorded in the Bible? I remember what the Apostle John said. And there are also many other things which Jesus did, the which, if they should be written every one, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that should be written. Pastor Ja, how could you say that there are no words of God outside the Bible? That doesn't make any sense. Right. The Lord Jesus clearly prophesied, I have yet many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. However, when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. And in the book of Revelation, this was prophesied many times. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. According to what you're saying, there are no words of God out of the Bible. So how could those prophecies and the words of the Lord be fulfilled? Yes, the Lord's prophecies were very clear that after his return, he would say many things and express many truths. Mm. Pastor Jia, mm. you are limiting God's work and words to the Bible but not seeking the words of the Lord in the last days, how will you be able to hear God's voice and welcome the Lord? 
and tell me, how will you go to supper with the Lord? Pastor Ja, Elder Shen, you'll see if God's words can be out of the Bible once you've listened to some of the words of this book. Then go ahead and read it. We actually do want to hear what is said in Almighty God's words. Almighty God says, All that is recorded within the Bible is limited and unable to represent all the work of God. The four Gospels have fewer than 100 chapters altogether in which are written a finite number of happenings, such as Jesus cursing the fig tree, Peter's three denials of the Lord, Jesus appearing to the disciples following his crucifixion and resurrection, teaching about fasting, prayer, and divorce, the birth and genealogy of Jesus and his appointment, of the disciples, and so forth. These are but a few writings, yet man values them as treasures, even verifying the work of today against them. They even believe that Jesus only did so much in the time after his birth. It is as if they believe God can only do this much, that there can be no further work. Is this not truly ludicrous? At the time, Jesus only spoke to his disciples a series of sermons in the Age of Grace, such as how to practice, how to gather together, how to ask in prayer, how to treat others, and so forth. The work he carried out was that of the Age of Grace, and he expounded only on how the disciples and those who followed him ought to practice. He did only the work of the Age of Grace and none of the last days. The work of God in each age has clear boundaries. He does only the work of the current age and never does he carry out the next stage of work in advance. Only in this way can his representative work of each age be brought to the forefront. Jesus had spoken only of the signs of the last days, of how to be patient and how to be saved, how to repent and confess and how to bear the cross and endure suffering. Never did he speak of what man in the last days should enter into or how to seek to satisfy God's will. As such, would it not be an act of fallacy to search within the Bible for God's work of the last days? What can you discern by merely holding the Bible in your hands? Be it an interpreter of the Bible or a preacher, who can really foreknow with certainty the work of today? The fact that I am explaining here is this. What God is and has is forever inexhaustible and limitless. God is the source of life and the source of all things. God cannot be fathomed by any created living being. Lastly, I must still remind everybody, do not delimit God in books, words, or his past utterances again. There is only one word for the characteristic of God's work, new. He does not like to take old paths or like to repeat his work. And moreover, he does not want people to worship him by delimiting him within a certain scope. This is God's disposition. God is the Lord of creation and the source of life for mankind. God's words are an endless stream. They are boundless. The Bible is just the record of his work in the age of law and the age of grace. His words documented in it are limited. How could you limit God's work and words to just the Bible? If we say that God could have only said those words in the Bible, then aren't we limiting him? Isn't that blasphemy? You are confining God's work and words to what exists in the Bible and doing everything to resist God in the last days. Aren't you taking the path of the Pharisees resisting God? How can you be so incredibly unaware? Sister Dawn, you say I'm taking the path of the Pharisees? What I'm doing is protecting the true way. Dong Xingxing. 
you've been preaching for many years, you should know well that we have already been redeemed from our sins by believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. We've already been saved by his grace. Amen. Amen. In the last days, he'll take us to his kingdom. He can't do the work of salvation again. Eastern Lightning says that the Lord has come to purify and save mankind. But that's absolutely impossible. If you want to keep believing in Eastern Lightning, okay, we'll just go our separate ways. However, I'll say the difficult words first. You want to believe in Eastern Lightning, I won't interfere. But you will not come to the church to convert. If I discover that you've done that, I'll stop playing nice. If then you're arrested and do more time, don't say I didn't warn you. Pastor Ja, you finally said what's in your heart. And now I can clearly see that you don't allow us to look into Eastern Lightning because you're afraid that everyone will accept Almighty God and then you won't have any status. You are madly resisting and condemning God's work to preserve your own status and income. You're doing everything to stop us from studying the true way. And you would even help the government to arrest believers. What is the difference between that and the Pharisees condemning the Lord Jesus Christ, your evil servants, who are stopping people from accepting the true way? Dong Jingjin, let's go now. Unbelievable. Hey, I've been thinking about what Pastor Ja said. Once we believe in the Lord, we've repented of our sins, and so we have been saved by His grace. That when He comes, He will take us to His kingdom, and that He wouldn't have to save us again. I think that doesn't sound right, but I don't understand why. So, what do you think about this? Yeah, I'm not really sure why either. Look, there she is. Sister Jingjing! Hi! Almighty God has already revealed all the mysteries of his management plan. Almighty God has already revealed the answer to your question. Really? Hey, Jingguang, have a seat. Okay. Shall we read a passage so you'll understand? Okay. Sister Yang, have a seat. Thank you. <sighs> Almighty God says, At the time Jesus' work was the redemption of all mankind, the sins of all who believed in him were forgiven. As long as you believed in him, he would redeem you. If you believed in him, you were no longer a sinner. You were relieved of your sins. This is what it meant to be saved and to be justified by faith. Yet, in those who believed, there remained that which was rebellious and opposed God, and which still had to be slowly removed. Salvation did not mean man had been completely gained by Jesus, but that man was no longer of sin that he had been forgiven his sins. Provided you believed, you would never more be of sin. Though man has been redeemed and completely forgiven of his sins, it's only considered as God not remembering the transgressions of man and not treating man in accordance with his transgressions. However, when man lives in the flesh and he has not been set free from sin, he can only continue to sin, endlessly revealing the corrupt satanic disposition. This is the life that man leads, an endless cycle of going into sin and going back to forgiveness. The majority of men sin in the day, only to confess in the evening. As such, even if the sin offering is forever effective for man, it would still be unable to save man from sin. Only half the work of salvation has been completed. For man still has corrupt disposition. It runs deeper than sin, planted by Satan itself, and deeply rooted within man. It's not easy for man to become aware of his sins. Man is unable to recognize 
his own deeply rooted nature. Only through judgment by the word can such effects be achieved. Only thus can man gradually be changed from that point onward. How could a sinner such as you, who has just been redeemed and has not been changed or been perfected by God, be truly after God's heart? For you who are still of your old self, it is true that you were saved by the Lord Jesus and that you were not counted as a sinner because of the salvation of God. But this doesn't prove that you are not sinful or impure. How can you be saintly if you have not been changed? Within, you are beset by impurity, selfish and mean, yet you still wish to descend with Jesus. You should be so lucky. You missed a step in your belief in God. You were merely redeemed, but not yet changed. For you to be after God's heart, God must personally do the work of changing and cleansing you. If you are only redeemed, you will be incapable of attaining sanctity. In this way, you will be unqualified to share in the good blessings of God. For you have missed out a step in God's work of managing man, which is the key step of changing and perfecting. And so you, a sinner who has just been redeemed, are incapable of directly inheriting God's inheritance. Mm -hmm. Though Jesus did much work among mankind, he only completed the redemption of all mankind and became man's sin offering and did not rid man of his corrupt disposition. Fully saving man from the influence of Satan not only required Jesus to take on the sins of man as the sin offering, but also required God to do the greater work to completely rid man of his disposition, which has been corrupted by Satan. And so, after man was forgiven his sins, God has returned to flesh to lead man into the new age and begun the work of chastisement and judgment. And this work has brought man into a higher realm. All those who submit under his dominion shall enjoy higher truth and receive greater blessings. They shall truly live in the light and shall gain the truth, the way, and the life. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Doesn't your heart feel brighter after hearing his words? Yes. Almighty God clearly explains God's work. <laughs> What the Lord Jesus did was just a work of redemption, but that's not God's work in the last days of judging and purifying mankind. We were redeemed from our sins because of our faith in the Lord, and that way we escaped the punishment of the law. But we all still lie in sin. This shows that although we were forgiven of sin through our faith, our original sinful nature is still there and hasn't been removed. We still live with a satanic disposition because of the shackles of our sinful nature. We have corruption of the flesh. We show off, we're arrogant, we're brash. True. Especially when faced with hardships. We blame the Lord. We complain, judge Him, and even betray Him. We don't put His words into practice, so we're not living by His word. Even if we frequently pray and confess to the Lord and work hard in the name of the Lord, we can't escape the bonds and restraints of sin. We always live in a state of sinning and confessing. This is an issue that everyone who believes in God has. Yeah, this is true. These are all facts. The Lord is holy and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. We often sin. We sin only to confess afterwards. We lie and we cheat. We don't obey the Lord. We don't practice His teachings. If we believed, but didn't get to go to heaven, we would rebel. We would blame God, condemn God, refuse Him, and walk away from Him. That's really true. How many people would still follow the Lord? Even us, we still can't shake off our satanic disposition, and we can't even practice His words. How could we become people who carry out His will? 
Is that kind of person worthy of entering the kingdom of heaven? If even those people could enter it, how would it be any different from this world? It wouldn't be any different. Yes. Why do you think that the religious world was left by God? Isn't it because they live within satanic dispositions, frequently lie in sin, resist and judge God? Not only do they not accept the Lord's return, but they condemn the work of Almighty God. They became enemies with Christ of the last days. How could they not suffer God's curse? That's yeah, right. How? How could God's righteous disposition tolerate the existence of those forces that resist Him? Hmm. We've seen that God's work and words of the last days can only occur within the Church of Almighty God. It can't be in other religious circles, and it cannot be in the world. So what does this tell us? It's very evident that these are places of resistance to God, and that God's will can absolutely not be carried out in places such as these. That makes a lot of sense. You said it so well. Almighty God of the last days is here, doing judgment work beginning at the house of God, based on the redemption of the Lord Jesus. Through expressing the truth to purify people's satanic dispositions, he is thoroughly saving mankind from the influence of Satan. So then, only by experiencing the judgment of Almighty God can we escape our satanic disposition and become obedient worshipers of God, be saved and enter His kingdom. <laughs> Thanks be to God. If we only accept the Lord Jesus' redemption, but not God's work of judgment in the last days, we can't possibly carry out the will of the Heavenly Father, and we won't really be obeying God. That way, how could we be good enough to enter the kingdom of heaven? <sighs> That's true. Now I'm clear on this. It turns out that the Lord Jesus only did the work of redemption. We've been redeemed from our sins, yet we often still lie in sin. When things happen to us that don't go the way we want to, we blame God. Mm -hmm. If it weren't for entering the heavenly kingdom, we wouldn't want to give up everything or tolerate suffering. Yes. Yes. Finally, I can see this clearly. In the past, the way we saw this was incredibly naive. Thinking that by believing in the Lord and being redeemed, we could enter his kingdom once and for all. I never knew that God's work of saving man wasn't just to redeem mankind from sin, but that he would also do the work of judgment and purification in the last days. Only this way will be purified and truly saved. Mm -hmm. And now, Almighty God, opened up about the mysteries of saving mankind. My heart feels so much brighter. Thanks be to Almighty God. Thanks be to, to God. God. Almighty God's words have revealed the truth that we didn't understand after years of believing. It has really opened up our eyes. Reading Almighty God's words, we know the truth, and we know how to obey God's work, how to believe and follow Him. We don't need to be misled by the lies of our pastors and elders. The words expressed by Almighty God saved us from the constraints of the religious world. Now that it's all behind us, we feel much more at ease, don't we? Yes. <laughs> the more we read Almighty God's words, the brighter we feel, isn't it? Hey, don't you think we are attending the Lord's feast? Yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> We've accepted Almighty God and welcomed the Lord, and we read His words every day. Isn't this attending the feast with the Lord? It is for sure. We are so blessed. Thanks be to Almighty God. Thanks yes. be to God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. <laughs> We've just accepted Almighty God and still don't understand many things in His words. When I read at home on my own, my understanding is limited. Cheng Wang, mm. we still have lots of puzzles. You should come and teach us more. Here's the thing. I still don't know that much yet. So we could invite witnesses from the Church of Almighty God. They shared the truth with clarity. <sighs> And we can have them come and tell us. What do you guys think? Wonderful. That's great. You know, you've really spoken to my heart. Our understanding is limited when we read God's words without fellowship mm -hmm. on Thank it. You. It's <sighs> wonderful to find others to talk to. It really to. is. <laughs> Thanks be to God. Let's get the brothers and sisters to come together. Great. The more we talk about it, the clearer we'll be on it. Yes. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. This is going to be exciting. How are you? Hi, how are you? This is going to be fantastic. Yes. Beautiful day. I'm looking forward to Brother this. Gao, Brother Lee. Yes. 
We've been reading Almighty God's words for a little while now, and we've seen that the words he's expressed are really the truth, that they truly are uttered by God, and they are his voice. Thank God. The words of Almighty God are wonderful. They reveal so many mysteries, allowing us to open our eyes and understand it. <laughs> yes. Thanks be to God. Yes. These truths are things we need in our lives and things we could never get while being in religion for many years. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Exactly. But we've just accepted Almighty God, so we have some questions we're not clear on. We wanted to ask your help for resolution. Then please go ahead. Okay. We've read Almighty God's words and saw that some things are very harsh. They are judgment of mankind and condemnation. If God judges and curses people, won't they just be condemned and punished then? How can it be said that this judgment is to purify and save mankind? We still don't entirely understand this, so I hope you can shed some light. Yes. Yes. Okay. Oh, that's it. God condemns mankind. So isn't that man being punished? How is that saving us? Yeah. Please explain why that is to us. In the last days, God does the work of judgment to make a group of overcomers. Those who are of one mind with God. This was determined when he created the world. Some people see that some of God's words condemn and curse people, so they misinterpret, because they don't know the work of God. God's judgment in the last days is the great white throne of judgment from the book of Revelation. God reveals his righteousness, majesty, and his wrath to expose mankind and distinguish each person. Beyond that, it's to end the old era and eliminate people of Satan. Amen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is really true. Mm -hmm. So for those of Satan who resist God, should God not condemn and curse them? Although they are words of judgment and exposing the corruption revealed by the God's chosen people, and these may seem harsh, this is to allow God's chosen ones to see the essence of their corruption and to bear the fruit of understanding the truth. Yes. Yes. Wow. yes. yes. If God wasn't so harsh, if his words didn't hit the nail on the head, we wouldn't be able to see our own corruption and satanic natures. And it wouldn't be possible for God's work in the last days to achieve the outcome of purifying and perfecting mankind. Mm -hmm. Everyone who loves the truth and respects facts should be able to see that God's words are sharp. Whether they are chastising or condemning, they entirely tally with facts. God speaks in a way that is practical and very genuine. Yes. yes. Amen. Very interesting yes. points. From the outcomes achieved by the harsh words of God, we can all observe that within them is God's genuine love for mankind and his good intentions of saving us. Only those who detest the truth could think otherwise. And only those who hate the truth could judge and condemn God's work. Yes. Right. yes. Amen. By doing the work of judgment, God reveals every type of person. God's work is so full of wisdom. God has been working in China for more than 20 years, and he has already made a group of overcomers. They have undergone brutal suppression and persecution by the government, and they stand witness. This is the fruit achieved by God's words. God's words have such authority. Yes, thanks be to God, yes. They've all seen God's love within his words, and they've seen how he suffered to save mankind. Even if some of his words are harsh, they still obey them. And from that, they have a genuine knowledge of God's disposition. They develop reverence and love for God. They fulfill their duties faithfully and follow God until the end. This is what most shames Satan. Mm -hmm. And this is the proof of God defeating Satan. Amen. 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 Yes. Being able to be this way after God's judgment is so wonderful. Mm -hmm. I really admire that. Me too. As for how God judges and purifies people in the last days, let's look at some passages of his words and we'll be clear. Oh, that's great. Almighty God says, when God becomes flesh this time, his work is to express his disposition primarily 
through chastisement and judgment. Using this as the foundation, he brings more truth to man, shows more ways of practice, and so achieves his objective of conquering man and saving man from his corrupt disposition. This is what lies behind the work of God in the Age of Kingdom. In the last days, Christ uses a variety of truths to teach man, expose the essence of man, and dissect his words and deeds. These words comprise various truths, such as man's duty, how man should obey God, how man should be loyal to God, how man ought to live out the normal humanity, as well as the wisdom and the disposition of God. These words are all directed at the essence of man and his corrupt disposition. In particular, those words that expose how man spurns God are spoken in regards to how man is an embodiment of Satan and an enemy force against God. In undertaking his work of judgment, God does not simply make clear the nature of man with just a few words. He exposes, deals with, and prunes it over the long term. These methods of exposure, dealing, and pruning cannot be substituted with just ordinary words, but with the truth that man does not possess at all. Only these methods are deemed judgment. Only through judgment can man be subdued and thoroughly convinced into submission to God, and moreover gain true knowledge of God. What the work of judgment brings about is man's understanding of the true face of God, and the truth about his own rebelliousness. The work of judgment allows man to gain much understanding of the will of God, the purpose of God's work, and the mysteries that are incomprehensible to him. It also allows man to recognize and know his corrupt substance and the root of his corruption, as well as to discover the ugliness of man. These effects are all brought about by the work of judgment, for the substance of this work is actually the work of opening up the truth, the way, and the life of God to all those who have faith in Him. This is the work of judgment done by God. Amen. 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 Brother yeah. Gao, may I read a passage? Of course. Through what is God's perfection of man accomplished? It's accomplished through His righteous disposition. God's disposition primarily consists of righteousness, majesty, judgment, wrath, and curse. And his perfection of man is primarily through judgment. Some people don't understand and ask why is it that God is only able to make man perfect through judgment and curse? They say that if God were to curse man, wouldn't man die? If God were to judge man, wouldn't man be condemned? Then how can he still be made perfect? Such are the words of people who do not know the work of God. What God curses is the disobedience of man, and what he judges are the sins of man. Although he speaks harshly and without the slightest sensitivity, he reveals all that is within man. And through these stern words he reveals that which is essential within mankind. Yet through such judgment he gives man a deeply profound knowledge of the essence of the human flesh. And thus man submits to obedience before God. The flesh of man is of sin and of Satan. It is disobedient and the object of God's chastisement. And so, to allow mankind to know themselves, the words of God's judgment must befall them. 
and there must be employed every kind of refinement. Only then can God's work be effective. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. Mm-hmm. All of you live in a place of sin and licentiousness. You are all licentious and sinful people. Today, you not only can see God, but more importantly, you have received chastisement and judgment, and you have received your deepest salvation. That is, received God's greatest love. All that God does is out of true love for you. He has no ill intention. It is because of your sins that he judges you so that you will examine yourselves and receive this tremendous salvation. All this is done to work man. From beginning to end, God has been doing his utmost to save man, and he is certainly not willing to completely destroy the men he created with his own hands. Now he has come among you to work. Isn't this even more salvation? If he hated you, would he still do work of such magnitude to personally lead you? Why should he suffer so? God does not hate you or have any ill intention toward you. You should know that God's love is the truest love. It is only because of people's disobedience that he has to save them through judgment. Otherwise, they would not be saved. As you do not know how to live or how to lead a life, and you live in this licentious and sinful place and are licentious and filthy devils, he does not have the heart to let you become even more depraved, nor has he the heart to see you living in a filthy place like this, being trampled by Satan at will, or the heart to let you fall into Hades, He only wants to gain this group of you and thoroughly save you. This is the main purpose of doing the conquering work on you. It is just for salvation. Amen. 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 Almighty God's words are expressed so clearly, so plainly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How could people misinterpret them? Oh, yeah, of course. People shouldn't do that to God's words. Mm -hmm. Right. People like that are absurd. Everyone who loves the truth should be able to accept mm-hmm. it. Yes. Yes. It's only people who hate the truth who condemn God's work. Yes. 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 Well, wasn't that exactly how the Pharisees were? That's right. The religious leaders and elders condemn Almighty God's work in the last days. Yeah. They really are the modern-day Pharisees. That's yes. the truth. After hearing this, everyone should now be clear about why God does judgment work. Am I right, everyone? Mm-hmm. Yes. yes, it's much clearer now. Mm-hmm. Mankind lives under the domain of Satan, lives in sin, and relishes that sin. No one in the religious community noticed God's arrival, and none of them want to accept the truth. Regardless of how people testify to God or spread his word, how many people actually sought out God's appearance and work? That's true. And how many are there who would accept and submit to God's judgment? Don't you think mankind is corrupted to its very core? That's true. Yes, it really is. If not for God's judgment work of the last days, would mankind, who is so corrupted and who denies and resists God, receive God's salvation and be cleansed? No way. No, of course not. If not for God's judgment work of the last days, who would make a group of overcomers? How would the prophecies of Lord Jesus be fulfilled? How would the kingdom of Christ be realized? (sighs) That's true. Many people with faith in the Lord believe that he's loving and merciful and that no matter what sins we commit, God will absolve us. They believe no matter how corrupt we are, no one will be cast aside, and that the Lord will rapture us no matter what. Is this a reasonable viewpoint? Is there something in his word to back this up? No, 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 there is not at all. God is holy and righteous. Would he then allow people who are tainted by filth and corruption, deniers of truth and enemies of God, to enter into his kingdom? Mm -hmm. No. Absolutely not. That's why the Lord prophesied he would return and express the truth to do his judgment work and thoroughly cleanse and save humanity. Mm -hmm. As for mankind who has been corrupted deeply, God will utter truth and do his judgment and chastisement. 
This is the only way to awaken the hearts of men, to conquer and free people from their satanic disposition. Even though God's word of judgment against mankind for its filth, corruption, disobedience, and resistance against God is harsh, it nonetheless shows God's holy and righteous disposition. And it also allows us to understand our satanic nature and the fact that we are corrupt. Through experiencing God's judgment, we have all been conquered by God's word. We have willingly submitted to his judgment and understood the truth. When we understand our own satanic nature, then we achieve a true understanding of God's righteous disposition. We have unconsciously changed our way of seeing things. Our life disposition has thoroughly changed, and we are able to fear God and shun evil. Amen. 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 God's yes. judgment has accomplished the creation of a group of overcomers. This is the result of God's judgment in these final days and is the true significance of God's judgment beginning with his house. Thank the Lord. What can we see from this? God judges and exposes man with his word, not to punish and destroy man, but to completely cleanse and change and save man. Mm -hmm. yes. Amen. But for those people who refuse to accept the judgment of Almighty God, when disaster comes, they will descend into it and be punished. Oh, yes. Mm. Oh, what I understand from this is that God judges man in order to save man, but yes. not to condemn or punish us. Of mm. course. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just like when a child does something wrong and the parents speak harshly, it's for the good of the child mm -hmm. so they can live up to expectations. Yes. Of course. Yes. Yeah. Thanks be to God. Thank God. We've undergone a few years of God's judgment and understood some truths. We have truly seen mankind's corruption by Satan. That every person is full of things like arrogance, deceitfulness, being egocentric, selfish, and despicable. And often, they can't help but lie, cheat, and resist God. They're nearly devoid of any human likeness. In front of God, we all feel shame and remorse, with nowhere to hide. This is one thing we gain from undergoing the judgment of God's words. The greatest thing we get is a bit of true understanding of God's righteous disposition and holy essence. So we can fear God and shun evil and live out the likeness of a real person. Yeah. All of us feel that we were purified by God and that we have been saved by him. Mm -hmm. yes. yes. Thanks be to God. Yes. Back in the day, when I was a leader in a church, I was focused on my own status, and I didn't take on the burden of my brothers and sisters. I wanted people to surround me. I was all high and mighty, and nobody could change my mind. When someone had a different opinion on something, I wouldn't seek the truth. I would just keep pushing my opinion so that the other person would obey. Since I didn't focus on pursuing the truth and didn't have the truth, when I preached, I spoke of words and doctrines to show off and exalt myself. That way, I didn't really know that my own actions offended God's disposition. Then there was one day that I read this in Almighty God's words. Those who believe for personal gain, who are self-righteous and haughty, who show themselves off and protect their own status, are those who love Satan and oppose the truth. They resist God and belong completely to Satan. Your image is even greater than God. Your status is higher than God to say nothing of your prestige among men. You have become an idol that people worship. Have you not become the archangel? When people's end is revealed, which is also when the work of salvation draws to a close, many of you will be corpses that are beyond salvation and must be eliminated. Oh. 
what he said was so, so true. true. Every bit of Almighty God's words contain authority and might. And they stabbed my heart like a sword. I had nowhere to hide. I was afraid. And I felt that God was angry at me. I could not help but fall in front of God and repent for my sins. I believed in God, but did not pursue the truth. I didn't bear witness to Him. But in performing my duty, I often showed off so that people would admire and look up to me. Wasn't I deceiving others? Wasn't I competing over status with God? What's the difference between me and the Archangel? I was too arrogant, and I had no shame. My actions offended God long before that even happened. And someone like me who fought over status with God would certainly be marked for elimination and should be cursed. I was in great pain and became negative. I prayed to God and sought the truth. And then I read more of Almighty God's words. Although chastisement and judgment are merciless disclosures and refinements to man, meant to punish man for his sins and punish his flesh, none of this work is intended to condemn and extinguish his flesh. The severe disclosures of the word are all for the purpose of leading you to the right path. You have personally experienced so much of this work, and clearly, it has not led you to an evil path. All of it is to enable you to live out a normal humanity. All of it is something your normal humanity can truly achieve. Mm -hmm. From Almighty God's words, I suddenly saw the light and understood God's good intentions for me. God's chastisement and judgment wasn't to eliminate me, but to have me understand my own satanic nature, to understand the nature and consequences of my actions, and to see how God deals with people like me. It was for me to genuinely repent, hate myself, forsake myself, to pursue the truth, pursue a real change, live out a normal humanity, Mm -hmm. His words corrected my misunderstandings. I stopped being negative and weak and began to pursue the truth. When I turned to God, I saw that he had not abandoned me, nor was he treating me based on my transgressions. He had illuminated and enlightened me. And I understood the significance of God judging and chastising people. Mm -hmm. I genuinely felt his mercy and salvation. <sighs> Thanks, Peter. Thanks, Peter. Oh, their experiences of God's work are so practical. They are true. After undergoing that judgment through God's words, I came to know God's righteous disposition and holiness. He hates our sins and satanic dispositions, which is why he condemns and curses mankind. I felt God's righteous disposition of not tolerating man's offenses and I started to revere him. Oh, praise the Lord. God. After undergoing that kind of judgment many times, I had a genuine understanding of my own arrogant nature. I was disgusted with myself and I hated myself. I became honest in fulfilling my duty and I was no longer brash. I stopped acting like that. I was able to hold God up high and bear witness to him and fulfill my duty according to his will. With my brothers and sisters, I dissected myself with consciousness and exposed my satanic ugliness. I didn't focus so much on other people's judgment of me anymore. And even when someone said something bad about me, I could turn to God, seek the truth, and know myself. I can't believe That's it amazing. Took me so long Thanks. to see I feel so great. The fact that I had changed a little bit was the outcome achieved by Almighty God's judgment and chastisement of me. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. What a yeah. message. I couldn't agree mm -hmm. more. 
if we don't go through that process, would we be able to achieve the changes we really need? No, no. absolutely not. Then are God's words of judgment the truth? And are they really his voice? Yes, yes, yes. They, are. they are. They are. They are. Absolutely. Wow, yeah. it's it's Isn't God's judgment of mankind yeah. really salvation and love for mankind? Yes. 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 That's yes. so right. right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Almighty God's judgment of mankind is very practical. Mm. Yes. It makes perfect sense. Yes, it does. Yes. yes. The more we fellowship his words, the more I'm sure that his words express God's disposition mm -hmm. and are God's voice. Yes, yes. 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 that makes sense. Yes. After reading Almighty God's words, we can match it up to our own states. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Judgment like this is so beneficial for people. Yes, really true. When truth. people who love the truth hear these words of judging and exposing mankind, they are all convinced. No wonder they had such quick progress. Thanks, Thanks to, to God. God. That's true. The experiences they're talking about are so practical. Almighty God's words really can change and purify people. Thanks be to God. Your testimonies are so genuine. They've made me see that Almighty God's work of judgment is very practical. And that he speaks very practically to judge and expose and to guide and to lead mankind. It's all to purify and save mankind. Mm. Almighty God's words are so powerful. Not only can they purify and change our satanic dispositions, but they can also give us a genuine understanding of God. Yes. Amen. Yes. Uh -huh. yes. Yes. We can see that. The words expressed by Almighty God are all an expression of God's righteous disposition. Every bit of it has might and power. Amen. 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 Our eyes have really been opened, haven't yes. they? Yes. 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 Thank God. Thanks be to God. Yes, Every sentence in Almighty God's words can open up our eyes and they can meet our needs in our hearts. What a wonderful, beautiful voice. Amen. Yes, yes. It is. Very yes. Very yes. Thanks be to God. Yes. Thanks Amen. be to God. Today, we've been able to hear the voice of God and accept his judgment. I feel so happy. Yes. Yes. Uh, believing in God for years. We've always hoped that one day we could be like the disciples of the Lord Jesus and live alongside the Lord every day. Listen to him preach and teach us. <laughs> that would be wonderful. <laughs> now that wish has finally been realized. We have accepted Almighty God and every day we can enjoy being enlightened and watered by his words. We are attending the wedding and the feast of the Lamb in the kingdom of heaven. Yes. Yes. We are so blessed. Thanks be to Almighty God. Thanks, Thanks, be, to Almighty God. God. Thanks be to Almighty God. Thanks be to Almighty God. Thanks be to Almighty God. Thank you so much for showing me. Then the trumpet sounds a holy blast. Sound comes out from the throne.